start with news happening right now. Albuquerque police are looking for a man who pistol whipped a woman, then took off with her purse. That happened Wednesday night at the shops at Paseo Crossing. A witness says he saw it all while leaving his office Wednesday night. He says he heard noises, then saw a man running with a purse and a woman on the ground. He then went to stop the man, and that's when the situation took another scary turn. He walked over just uh, to the road over here, showed me his gun, pointed it at me, and I turned and went the other way. The witness says he called 911 shortly after. He says it looked like the woman was hit in the head with the thief's gun. Witnesses say the woman who was pistol whipped was leaving the restaurant vintage that night to go to her car. Police are still looking for the thief. We turn out to this this morning. The hunt is still on for the third suspect in a wild stolen car chase. This as we're learning more about who deputies say was behind it all that locked down UNM Hospital. Investigators now say one of the suspects is a 17 year old girl. Deputies first spotted a stolen car near Los Padillas Elementary. They say two people rammed deputies cars, then led them on a high speed chase. The suspects eventually ditched that car, then hopped into an SUV, which they ditched right outside UNM Hospital. Deputies then found 17 year old Angelica Morales in the parking garage. Charges against her are pending at this time, but deputies are still looking for the driver this morning. On to this, an Albuquerque man caught stealing an APD bait car begins his sentence this morning. 48 year old Gary Jaquez pleaded guilty in district court yesterday to auto burglary charges. In May of last year, Jaquez not only stole the bait car, but also loaded up bait items into another vehicle. Jaquez will spend four years in prison. This morning, 41 people are facing drug trafficking charges after an eight month long investigation. The FBI and DEA says the investigation targeted drug dealers in Chavez County. The Roswell Daily Record took these photos during one of the 14 raids there. The feds say more than 5,000 grams of meth, nearly $36,000 in cash, and numerous guns were seized from several homes there. Also today, state police are investigating a possible illegal pot farm. Investigators say a stranded motorist stumbled upon these weapons and drugs in the middle of the forest. When police went back to the area near Tres Piedras to bust it, they found 14 guns along with bags of drugs. They were able to make one arrest. We turn out to news happening today in Albuquerque. Matt is hoping the third try is a charm this morning. Pilot John Sharp is trying to break a world record for airspeed, but he's faced a couple of setbacks so far. The first was on Tuesday when his plane experienced mechanical problems. Yesterday, he says he felt a little under the weather, so he'll try again today in Moriarty. Sharp wants to beat an airspeed record for planes that weigh less than 2,300 rather pounds. The existing record is 356 miles per hour. A popular park in the Duke City is trashed after this week's storms. We spoke with people yesterday who visit Los Altos Park. They say the city kicked out a homeless camp there recently and put all of their trash in plastic bags, but those bags were ripped apart by Tuesday's storm. Some say the mess is a health hazard. Very concerned about the safety of the people, very concerned about the health care of everybody that comes in here and including them. And I would really like to see the city or the county or whoever step in or the city council and do something about it. Uh, people say the homeless don't camp in the park, but very close to it. We turn out to news happening right now. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating a deadly crash that killed four college students. Dozens of others are injured this morning. Take a look at your TV screens here. Police say it happened when a duck boat tour bus and a charter bus collided on the bridge right there yesterday. Witnesses say the vehicles were heading in opposite directions when the duck boat suddenly swerved, then hit the oncoming charter bus. The bus was carrying nearly 50 students and staff from North Seattle College. They were heading to a new student orientation at the time of the incident. Also happening now, the U.S. and Australian embassies in Malaysia are on high alert this morning after issuing warnings about a potential terror attack. They say that they've gotten intelligence that has them warning Americans to stay away from a popular shopping district in Kuala Lumpur. They say that terrorists do plan to attack the area, but they aren't saying much else about specifically what made them issue those warnings. This morning, customers of a busy Walmart are calling for change after an all out brawl inside that was caught on camera. This is what some people are saying now. I don't come that often, but I wouldn't want to walk into something like that. This Walmart is really out of control. They really need to have security here. 
And this is why the, the reactions come after seeing this video of a fight at a North Carolina Walmart. Authorities say it started when a 14 year old tried stealing a shirt there. When loss prevention got to him, they pulled him, then started fighting. When police arrived, they arrested the teen. He's now facing assault charges. Okay, listen to this story. A Carlsbad man walked away from a McDonald's without his order, but he got an order from police instead. According to the Carlsbad Current Argus, police were called out Wednesday when a man started screaming at employees and being destructive because they left pickles on his burger. When police arrived, he was given a stern warning. They aren't releasing his name because he wasn't arrested. <laughs> That's how a lot of people feel about their condiments. Just don't want to throw a fit. Exactly. <laughs> Take it in stride, I guess, right? It's now 6.07. Moving on to this story, mm. very serious story this morning. Story that's got a lot of attention around the nation. An Oklahoma teacher sending home a disturbing article. Now that article calls a four-year-old boy's left-handedness evil and sinister. And now the school is finally speaking out about what happened. It all began when little Zadie's mom noticed him trying to do his homework with his right hand, even though he's left handed. She sent a note in with the boy asking what was going on. And she says she got an article back from the teacher calling the left hand in this unlucky and even more. The superintendent now says he's not happy with what the teacher did, but maintains the teacher never told the boy not to write with his left hand. His mom says that's not true. And I just asked if you know there was anything that any had his teachers ever said anything about his hands and he raises this one and he says this one's bad. Zaid's mom also says the school hasn't disciplined the teacher. The superintendent says she has been disciplined, but he cannot discuss how. Well, today's a big day for Apple fans waiting for the latest iPhone. This is a live look outside the Apple store at Albuquerque Uptown this hour. It's about a dozen people or so in line. These are diehards who really want they that really Apple iPhone. Are. They really are. <laughs> the iPhone 6S goes on sale today. I, they're joining a lot of crowds around the world. This is what uh, it looked like in Australia earlier today. The launch of any new iPhone usually means long lines at Apple stores and at shops run by major mobile carriers. This year, one woman in San Diego made herself into a robot to avoid waiting in line. There you go. There it is. So sometimes the stores sell out, but Apple's been working with providers to make sure that everybody has sufficient inventory to meet the demand. And did you notice somebody even took their pet out here in Albuquerque? I guess if you're <laughs> the gonna... dogs like seriously, I don't need to get up See, this early. Those are the kind of people that are there for like two or three days. That's true. Just wait a week or so. It'll be you'll have it in your hands. I promise. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> Six oh nine. Starting today, you're gonna have a chance to win a free balloon ride during this year's balloon fiesta. Yeah, all you have to do. It's pretty easy. Is snap a picture of fall right here in Albuquerque and post it to Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag picture ABQ. Now 10 pictures will be selected by a team of judges and a winner will be announced October 6th. The contest begins today at noon. We have more details for you on the contest on our website, krqe.com. That's easy enough, right? Absolutely. Otherwise, you're going to pay out maybe some expensive oh, for expensive yeah. rides, so might as well get one free. Good. Thanks, Kristen. We'll begin now with a jam-packed schedule for the Pope today. Yeah, he's set to visit the 9-11 Memorial and hold mass at Madison Square Garden, but not before addressing more than 100 world leaders. News 13's Catherine Mazzone is here with all the details. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. We're taking a live look at a New York City where you can see people gathered to see Pope Francis before the United Nations. The Va Vatican flag will be raised for the first time outside the United Nations headquarters before the General Assembly. World leaders, including President Obama, are set to adopt a series of goals they want to achieve by 2030. They range from ending poverty to combating climate change. When Pope Francis addressed Congress yesterday, he spoke to those issues as well as the issue of immigration. We must not be taken aback by the numbers but rather view them as persons. He considers uh, the, uh, the immigrants today in the world in general uh, discriminated against. Thousands anxiously await to hear what the pontiff has to say next. Many were selected via lottery to attend this evening's mass at Madison Square Garden. He speaks to all of us, old, young, people that maybe felt they weren't accepted in the church. I don't think they should feel that way any longer. I hope they don't feel that way any longer. Now, just after arriving in New York yesterday, Pope Francis spoke about matters of the church. He received a standing ovation from American nuns after thanking them for their service to the church. Vatican spokespeople say it's a sign the Pope is aware of the importance of women's service in the church. 
Back to you. Thanks so much, Catherine. The Holy Father's last stop in the U.S. is Philadelphia. Speaking of the pontiff, Archbishop John C. Wester from Santa Fe met Pope Francis. This is a picture sent to us of their meeting. It was taken this week at the Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle in Washington, D.C. On to this, a father is now charged with aggravated DWI and child abuse after deputies say he passed out behind the wheel and then crashed into a barrier with his son in the back seat. Open the door. New video shows deputies as they get to Highway 84 285 in Santa Fe near the Santa Fe Opera House around 340 on a Sunday morning two weeks ago. After knocking on the windows for about five minutes, 32 year old Royce Dominguez Martinez finally got out and then the priority became making sure his six year old son was safe. I'm scared. You're scared? Yeah. Okay, you don't have to be scared. You're safe right now. You're safe with us. You want to go home? Okay. Deputies say they found an open beer can in the SUV that was still in drive up against the barrier. The vehicle was. According to an initial report, his breath alcohol concentration was more than twice the legal limit. The boy was picked up by his mother and was okay. Dominguez Martinez bonded out of jail the day after his arrest. We turn out to news happening right now. New Mexico Attorney General Hector Valderas, along with 26 other state attorneys general, are now investigating Volkswagen. This comes after the automaker admitted rigging diesel cars to pass emissions tests. As part of the multi-state investigation, the attorneys general will send subpoenas to Volkswagen. We'll let you know how this turns out. 635, a repeat offender is locked up this morning, but despite a criminal history dating back five years, police have not been able to keep him behind bars. Anthony Chavez has been charged with burglary more than a dozen times, but each time he's arrested, he's out on the streets days later. Police think it's because in some cases the court has found Chavez incompetent, but the DA says none of the crimes that he's committed have been violent enough to force him into a mental hospital. And those are usually, um, you know, murder, uh, CSP, kidnapping. I mean, they're the most violent offenses. Um, aggravated assault is not one of those. The DA's office could not tell us, though, why Chavez is considered mentally incompetent, citing medical privacy laws. This morning, one of two charges is dropped against a New Mexico police sergeant who's accused of assaulting a handcuffed suspect. Lapel camera video captured tells police sergeant Janie Davis and other officers confronting Frank Olania after getting a call about loud music. At one point, you can hear Olania threatening the officers, making references to the Mexican mafia. It then appears Davis knees then kicks Olania after he's handcuffed. Davis was facing both battery and assault charges. After a court hearing, though, prosecutors announced they would only press charges with a battery. If convicted, she could face six months in jail. Developing now, Albuquerque police are actively working to find a new home for a retired police canine. Nine-year-old Rex has worked with APD since 2013. APD said that Rex is too emotionally bonded to his now retired handler to work with anybody else. His handler couldn't take him in because he had a small child at home, and many feared he may be euthanized after that. APD, though, says it's now looking into three rescue shelters. They say all three options have beautiful sanctuaries where Rex will have a lot of room to run and be a dog. Interest rates will be going up soon. The Federal Reserve chairman says she expects the central bank will raise interest rates by the end of the year. The chairman's comments came during a speech at the University of Massachusetts Amherst yesterday. It's not clear how much rates will go up, but as I did mention, she did say the increase will come soon. One of the reasons, inflation. New on this Friday morning, two universities are taking back the honorary degrees they gave to Bill Cosby. Marquette University's Board of Trustees in Milwaukee approved a resolution rescinding an honorary degree presented to Cosby in 2013. Fordham's Board of Trustees also voted to take back an honorary doctorate of fine arts degree given to him in 2001. Both schools say it is the first time that they've ever done something like this. This comes after several women came forward accusing Cosby of sexual assault. Cosby's not been charged with a crime. Take a look at the video here. It shows the tables getting turned on a school bully. It's gone viral. A blind student at a high school in California was getting attacked by another boy when a 13 steps in right there to protect the blind student. Right there, you see it happening. The witnesses say the fight happened during lunchtime. They say the blind student was attacked for no reason at all, and the student who stopped it is now being called a hero. Police are now mm. investigating this assault. 
Listen to this, an accused burglar almost got away with hiding a very expensive ring until deputies used an x-ray machine. Two people are facing charges accused of stealing dozens of diamond rings from a jewelry store in Cincinnati. The surveillance video allegedly shows the theft, but investigators say they could only find 26 of the 27 rings taken. And it wasn't until the suspects were x-rayed during booking that they say they found that one of them had swallowed a ring. Deputies say the x-ray is part of a new piece of equipment used by the department during suspect searches. Huh, so that's interesting. I still know how you swallow something like that. <laughs> you know, when they were walking up to that x-ray, she's like, oh no. <laughs> They're going to find it. They're going to find it. Interesting. <laughs> it's